Okay, so I got two questions in my comment section that I am going to address today. Question, both questions came from the same person. And you guys, for some reason, YouTube doesn't give me my comments. I don't see my comments. I have to go out into the, to the app to see comments and sometimes I forget to do that and then there'll be comments from weeks ago, months ago and I'm like, what? Um, so these comments were about a couple of weeks ago but I'm still gonna address them. And hey y'all, hey y'all, thanks for tuning into my channel. This is Sonetta. I'm gonna do a phase, a quick little phase and then I'm going out for happy hour at this particular spot is Tuesday wings instead of Taco Tuesday. Where most people do Taco Tuesday. I'm like, why don't y'all do Wednesday wings and then do tacos on Tuesdays? But the wings are so good. And they only $3 for six wings. So that's where I'm getting ready to go. So Regina, Queen, I forgot your handles. Queen B70 or something like that. It took me a long time to realize that that was you. But you wanted to, you asked me about the keto diet and you said that you can't get motivated. How do I get motivated? So hopefully this uh, will help anybody else out there who's struggling to get motivated. And Regina asked this question particularly regarding diet and exercise. So, but I think this can help if you're struggling to get motivated in any other area. Um, and I did take notes because I wanted to make sure I covered all the points I wanted to cover. The main thing is, um, okay, before I talk about motivation, let me just talk about the keto diet and how I do it. And the key is consistency. I was consistent for a couple of months. Lost 12 pounds, boom. Got off track. It only takes me, it only takes one little thing for me to get off track. So now I'm working my way back up to, and I still do it, but not as strict. And you can watch tons and tons of YouTube videos about keto. Just like in the natural hair community, you guys know that there was like natural hair um, Nazis were like, oh, you ain't supposed to do that. You ain't supposed to. Even in the makeup community, like you're not supposed to. There's like a template, but you can alter it and change it, make it yours, do whatever you want to do. There's no rules. Okay. But um, traditionally, the keto diet is low carb, high fat, and moderate protein. That was the standard years ago when I did keto, but now I just recently read this article where they're, the keto diet, they're um, calling for people to raise their protein. So low carb, high fat, or maybe they switched it low carb, moderate fat, and then higher protein. I make sure I have protein with every meal. I don't count how much protein and all that i just make sure i have protein with every meal and i do high fat and low carb so low carb for me my breakfast is easy it's um and even if i don't eat my breakfast until later almost like it's lunch time but i'm eating what i bought for breakfast which will be eggs and bacon it's like a staple because and in my eggs if i scramble them i'm using butter so that's the fat real butter not margarine and years ago they said eggs and butter causes high cholesterol and that that has been debunked that is not true hi hi finway so eggs and bacon and, and i'll cook my eggs i'll get bored with certain kind of way i eat my eggs so i'll do over easy scramble boil i'll mix in some vegetables some mushrooms and make a scramble mushrooms peppers and onions 
like that. But literally, that's that's my breakfast. I'm not having pancakes and all of that. I mean, if I'm treating myself, yeah, that's one thing. You don't want those carbs, though. And then the fat from the bacon, and bacon has a lot of protein. For lunch, I'll, I'll have, instead of a hamburger, I'll just have my, uh, oh, I just recently made a chopped cheese sandwich, which was so good. So just a hamburger patty, you chop it up, put some onions. Um, you typically on a hoagie with lettuce and tomato, but skip the hoagie and just put it on a bed of lettuce. So I'll just have some meat in my vegetables. My vegetables always consist of mushrooms, onions, green pepper, red pepper, the bell pepper. That's my staple vegetables. And then I might add in broccoli. You hear my stomach? Or some, um, I might have green beans, but I have that protein. Whatever protein I cook, I usually cook it in olive oil or butter. I'll do a little piece of steak, a little skirt steak or something with my vegetables on the side. That's my protein and fat. And then it's low carb. It's so easy for me to do low carb. When you first go on keto, though, and, and I'm sorry I'm not looking directly in the camera, you guys, because I'm doing my makeup as well, and the camera's over here, and I can't be looking over here. I got to look right here. Um... When you first go on keto, you're going to experience something called keto flu. And it really does feel like you got the flu. When your body doesn't have those carbohydrates, you feel sick, weak, like you got the flu. Years ago, when I first went on keto for the first time, I was, I remember I was at a um, an event. Learning how to change the tire on my bike. And I got so sick and so weak. But now that I'm doing keto, I've learned so much. When you when you lose, when you're not eating a lot of carbohydrates, <clears throat> you, you need electrolytes. And they have electrolyte powder. They got those little electrolyte little sleeves that you pour into your water, you know, flavored water. They got those electrolyte powders and electrolytes, you know, your sodium and your potassium gets depleted. And if you don't have that in your system, so if you start getting sick, you can even just take some sea salt and put it on your tongue. And that'll take away that sick feeling. I didn't know that at first, the first time around. So low carb. If you want to get real strict with it and measure out how many proteins, because basically the amount of proteins you, your body needs is based on your weight. And they'll say, whatever you weigh, you take half of that and that's how many ounces of protein you're supposed to. I don't got time for none of that. I just make sure I eat protein with every meal. And another thing about Adding the butter, which is the fat or the uh, olive oil or another good fat. Another good fat is avocado. If you can incorporate that in your every meal, just slice on the side. Make some guacamole and have it on the side. It just fills you up to where I literally only eat two meals a day. And do not snack in between. And I do not have an appetite. It's not like I'm starving. I'm starving now because... Um, my stomach hurts so bad because I'm so hungry. It's 128 and I have not broke my fast. So, um, I forgot what I was getting ready to say. I was going to make a point about something, but, um, what do I need next? I'm sweating. Uh, intermittent fasting. And I don't really want to get into intermittent fasting, but Regina, since you asked this question, if you want to do keto, incorporate intermittent fasting with it for me they go hand in hand and the way i do my intermittent fasting is i do the 16 8 protocol i fast for 16 hours and then i give myself an eight hour window to eat so last night 
what was yesterday? Yesterday was Monday. Oh, my cousin had um, an event at her house. She had food and cocktails outside at her house. Um, and so I went there. She was celebrating. They were celebrating the, the sixth anniversary of one of my cousin's death. Her brother's death. And so I don't let my intermittent fasting or my keto ruin or interrupt my social life so you don't want to get social you're like oh no i can't make it because i know i'm going to have something to eat and i've already had my last meal or you're serving spaghetti and i don't eat carbs that much i'm doing low carb diet you know what i mean so i just in moderation so i it was like i was over there i must have left maybe eight o'clock so I might have ate around 7, 7.30. And so I just said, okay, maybe 8 o'clock. So that means that was my last meal at 8 o'clock. So that means I can't eat anything until 12 today. So 8, eight at night to 8 in the morning, that's 12 hours. And then from 8 to 12 is another 4 hours. So that's 12, 34, 16. So my fast should have been broken, could have been broken at 12 o'clock. I hope I'm making sense. So that's 16 hours that I did not eat. You can lose weight just by doing intermittent fasting, no matter what you eat in that eight hour window. But if you want to capitalize on that, then what you eat in that eight hour window should be low carb, high fat, moderate protein. It's not going to be like that all the time because my cousin, I don't know who made that spaghetti. I need to ask her, but it was spaghetti noodles with a white sauce. So like maybe an Alfredo sauce with shrimp and crab. So it was like a shrimp, crab, white sauce spaghetti. Ah, oh, so good. So I was like, well, I'm just going to get a little bit. And then I had to get some more. It was so good. So I had carbs yesterday. It's still low carb. I mean, because for breakfast, I might have had my... um. I'm almost sure I have my uh, bacon and eggs because that's what I eat. And sometimes, that's what I eat every day. But sometimes, y'all, I will go the whole day not eating until I have that one meal in the evening. And that's it. And that's called OMAD. Only, OMAD, only meal, one meal a day. One meal a day is OMAD. And people, they do that too. Another thing you can do is... They call it alternate day fasting, where you eat normal one day, and you can still eat under the keto protocol. So you eat your keto meal uh, meals one day, and then the next day you fast and don't eat nothing. It's called alternate day fasting. You can try that. You can watch all those videos. I stay motivated to stay on keto and stay on intermittent fasting by watching the videos because it just keeps me motivated. When I see other people doing it and being successful at it, I'm stuck at 12 pounds, you guys. I have not lost. I want to get out of the 170s so bad because I've been in the 180s, 190s. I've gotten up to 201, I think was my highest weight some years ago. Um, and then I got down to the 190s, 180s, and then I teeter top back and forth between the 170s and the 180s. My goal is to get into the 160s, 165, even 160 would be good. I can't get to it. <laughs> I can't get to it because I, you know, like I said, I'm all over the place with my regimen, but I'm conscious of it. So yesterday, my last meal was at 8 o'clock. It's already 135. So I could have eaten at 12. My body is like, okay, it's been 16 hours. But the longer you go, the better. And so, and my stomach is now starting to growl. But anyway, so that's that. That is how I do keto. And I don't do the keto where they have, um, they have like keto recipes where you can, um, you know, make keto bread and make keto cookies and all that. I don't do none of that. I eat whole foods. I just eat whole foods. No processed foods. Like, I don't, um, I don't buy, like, I ate that spaghetti at my cousin's house. I don't do that. I don't buy 
bag, package stuff. I buy my fresh meats, my fresh vegetables, and that's it. And my fats, which is uh, avocado, olive oil, and butter. If you haven't watched this video call, and this guy doesn't make videos anymore because he said that um, he said that he was just getting beat up on social media by the keto Nazis and the people who were believing that fat was bad, you know, all the butter he was eating and stuff. But he 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 met, he became famous on YouTube, not famous, but his videos went viral because he made this video called "Butter Makes Your Pants Fall Off." Google that video, uh, search that in YouTube and watch that video. Butter makes your pants fall off. And he got some other videos too, but he started cooking with butter. And his pants just start falling off. He just started losing, losing so many inches. So I just eat whole foods. I don't stay away from fruit necessarily. Oh, and sugar. You do not want to be messing around with sugar. Even in my coffee, I had to change um, because you don't want to use imitation sugar either, like Splenda. That stuff is not good for us um, over time. And that's how I used to sweeten my coffee is with Splenda. But I had to get some other sugars, um, monk fruit. There's a couple of different ones. That's okay. And the, and the taste is, you got to get used to it. It's not like, oh, this is good. No, it's, I had to get used to it. But it was worth it because it's just all natural. It's an all natural sweetener. And I just bought some monk, monk fruit um, packets. I wish I had it up here to show you, but monk fruit packets on um, Amazon. And they're just like in little packets like the Splenda is. And then I just put um, cream in my coffee, like heavy whipping cream, just a little dot dabble of that and that's fat that's a healthy fat you know it's good for you but sugar you do not want to be sitting up eating no cakes and cook oh my god that is going to definitely uh take you out of ketosis your body's not going to burn fat with, with that sugar in your system so um so that's it on that how do you stay motivated and one of the things that Regina said was, I know what to do, how to exercise and all that. I just am not motivated at this time to do it. And that's just what I told my doctor when she said that um, she wanted me to lose a few pounds. I said, I know, and she was trying to get, I said, I know exactly what to do. I know what I'm supposed to be doing. And a lot of us do, right? We know we ain't supposed to be eating that bowl of ice cream at 1030 at night. We know that. But we, okay. This is what I want right now. <laughs> but how to get motivated to get started? Regina, one of the things that I want you to remember which you already know it. I, I know you do, but I want you to just remember this. If you're waiting for motivation to get started, you may never start. Um, motivation is only going to come once you take action. So it's action first. And like I said, if you watch a lot of YouTube videos on keto exercising, people doing different 30-day challenges and stuff that might inspire you to move into action. But your motivation, motivation comes um, by a chemical in our brain called dopamine. So if you don't get your dopamine going, motivation, True motivation is not going to even, it's not going to be there. So I took some notes. Um, I wrote some notes down. I put 
uh, dopamine is a neurotransmitter. It's a chemical in our brain that's associated with feeling rewarded or motivated. And it once it's activated, it helps us to strive and focus. It, it has to do with um, when we feel pleasure from eating ice cream. It's a reward. It's like, oh, I this ice cream gives me pleasure. Or shopping, I'm getting pleasure out of this. Your dopamine is activated. It's associated with sticking with something until it rewards you. So like an example is the casino. People, they keep going back to that casino because they won before, right? And they just keep putting that money in that slot machine. Keep putting that money in that slot machine and then they'll get rewarded with this big win. And that's what keeps them going back. Like me, I'm a, I go fishing all the time. Y'all been fishing. I haven't been recording my fishing excursions because Larry is back in town. We've I've only gone once so far, actually. But we went... Um, over to Iowa, which is the next state over. But um, I'm motivated to stay on that bank for hours because whenever I get, whenever I'm reeling in that fish, well, that's my reward. I stick to it until it rewards me. But I have to go. I have to in order to get that reward, I have to go fish it, right? I have to put it into action. Action always comes first. Um, what else did I write down? I want to make sure. So if you could think about a circle, you take action, then you get rewarded from your action, then you're motivated to do that action again. So you start exercising, you get rewarded, there's your motivation to keep exercising. Action comes first. Um, and so once you start exercising, there's so many different rewards associated with exercising. It's not just losing weight. I don't know if that's your goal. I think you said that, I'm not sure. But so many benefits come from exercising. You might not see no change in the scale for a while. Sometimes people will start losing inches before the scale actually moves. But you definitely going to start feeling better, sleeping better. There's all kind of different rewards that will come with the action that you took to exercise. The reward is now you're sleeping better. So that is your motivation to keep going. Make sense? What else did I write? I put, as people, we struggle to change how we feel. So if we're feeling sad, we're feeling down, we'll do all kind of, all sorts of things to try to get out of that feeling bad place. Well, I'm feeling down, so I'm going to have a bowl of ice cream. I'm feeling down, so I'm going to go hang out with some friends. We, we do things to change how we feel. But what's important with motivation and trying to get motivated and stay motivated, we want to focus on changing how we act and changing how we think. Um, so get rid of like the self negative t talk, you have a negative thoughts in your head about yourself. Like, dang, I can't believe I didn't let all this weight get on me over the uh, pandemic or whatever, you know, change that. No negative self talk. And then change how you act. It's all in the action. Um. Another thing I put down was build routines and habits to stay motivated. So once you get motivated, how you stay motivated is because I don't care even if you are rewarded. Like you started exercising, now you're losing weight. So that motivates you to 
to keep going. There's going to always be those times where we fall off the wagon. And so it's important to build habits and routines. And you can even start there with your action. You know, maybe your first step is not just to go to the gym and start working out right. Maybe your first step is to get a routine going, like write down, okay, I want to start working out and these are the times that I'm going to work out. I think I showed you guys a video where I have my um, whiteboard. I took the mirror off my dining room wall and um, put up a big old whiteboard so that I could see what I need to do each day for the week for my assignments and then things that I'm working on, people I'm praying for, all that kind of stuff. So I have to see it. So get a visual like, this is my workout schedule. Once I get started, I'm going to wake up at this time, work out at this time, have dinner at this time. So get your schedule down first and then start with one of those, start with that step. Start with the step of getting up early. Or whenever you plan on working out, everybody doesn't wake up in the morning and work out. Some people work out at the end of their day. But start building um, a routine. So along with exercising, you're going to have to, and being on the keto diet, you're going to have to make sure most of your meals are prepared at home. That's, that is almost key to staying on track. Yes, you're going to go out course summertime but most of your meals during the week is going to be made at home so that means you have to go grocery shopping which means that you have to have a plan what are you going to buy at the grocery store so start there start with maybe i'm just going to start with meal prepping first then next week i'm going to start waking up at this time and then Maybe the following week, okay, now I'm finna put it all into action. I'm finna wake up at this time, get to the gym, boom, my meal's already cooked. So just create your, your habit and your routine. That is, once you get started, and then the rewards are going to kick in immediately. You're going to feel accomplished. You're going to feel less stressed because you're not trying to scramble to cook meals. You're going to feel you're sleeping better, um... You know, feel good from sleeping better. Then you're going to get the weight. You know, the weight might start coming off or the inch, you might start losing inches. Your skin might start clearing up. Once you see that and feel all that, there's your motivation. That motivation will keep you doing the actions, your action steps. I hope that makes sense. Let me see what else I put. I put choose a small thing to act on. Then you'll see. So that was when I said. You don't, don't necessarily have to jump into your exercise. Get a plan first. You know, what are you going to wear to the gym? Or, or are you even going to the gym? Are you going to just work out at home? Are you going to just do some walking outside? What are you going to wear? Do you got your uh, clothes lined up? Your joggers, your tennis shoes. Do you know where the tennis shoes is at? <laughs> So just get one, take one small step toward, you can write on your board or in your, on your calendar or whatever, the overall goal, the overall goal is to uh, get started with exercise and meal prep, whatever, but get that all written out and then take one small step. Then I put rewards and how you reward yourself for doing well. Rewards kind of help keep you going too. You know, like, um, and I used to do this, like, if I lost a few pounds or whatever, I'm just on this strict regimen, haven't um, broken it. I've been on track. I didn't lost five pounds. I'm going to reward myself with some chocolate cake and ice cream. That's just, I'm just giving an example. Those are superficial rewards that they're okay, that's fine. But rewards that really will help you are internal sense of pride rewards. Internal sense of pride rewards are just sit with your accomplishments. Write them on the board. Brag about them on Facebook. 
or whatever your social media, if you even do social media, hey, I just lost, da, 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 those are rewards. Because what you're going to get back is, you're going to be like, congratulations, oh girl, you're doing it, keep it up, keep it up. That helps you to feel good, right? To me, those rewards last longer than just you just went and had indulged in, you know, piece of chocolate cake or whatever. Uh, put your rewards on on your chalkboard. I mean, your whiteboard or your chalkboard. I don't know. You're in your calendar, in your planner. Um, tell somebody. So, like I said, you can get that feedback. So, those are the rewards that I'm talking about. I think I covered everything that I wanted to. Um, and like I said, sometimes watching the YouTube videos help. But that's not motivation. That's kind of inspiration and uh, getting ideas of what other people are eating. It really, it, that really helps me. I hope that helped. And I, as far as I could tell, those are the only questions that I've gotten from people because I asked in my last video, which was some time ago, a few weeks ago, to ask me anything and I'll address it in a video. And I think that was the only one. And I just saw it today because, and it was two weeks ago, it said that your comment came in. YouTube is not showing me my comments all the time. So, if, and I don't get very many comments. So I typically answer all of them. But I can if I don't see them. So I just have to remember to go out to the app. Because I think on the app, it does show them. So anyway, I'm going to go eat me some chicken wings. It is now 153. I've been fasting since 7. I'm good and hungry. <laughs> I am good and hungry. And after I eat these wings... So I'm literally just having wings. I'm not having fries on the side or anything like that. Um, sometimes I'll just order some to go and then later, like five or six, I might have um, have more, right? Have my leftovers. But I made chopped cheese yesterday. So I have uh, I have that to eat. So that's a wrap. I'll see y'all in my next video, which I don't know when it's going to be, you guys. I am um, so busy with school, so busy with school and so drained with it. I'm so tired, but I'm almost there. Memorial Day is coming up. Hope you guys have a great holiday. I might vlog for Memorial Day. Um... My cousin Cynthia is coming in town. I'm looking forward to seeing her. She might already be here. I'm not sure because her niece graduates this week. Um, and I did go to my niece, uh, her nieces, which is my cousin's daughter, my cousin. I went to her graduation party. I went to Shannon's. Two of her sons graduated. I went to their graduation parties on Sunday. Um, it's just a lot going on you guys a lot going on sometimes i'm sure you guys are busy too and doing your thing so um so that's it that's that's just kind of why i haven't been around as much um but if you post a question ask me anything i'll do a, i'll make a video about it i got a new subscriber can't think of your name right now you said you came to me because you saw my uh five ways to tie my headscarf video um i wish i could hold on okay i was gonna try to find the comment and and um shout you out but already it's gone it's like i don't know what youtube does with the comments the comment situation but you guys keep leaving me comments um i will try and get to them as soon as possible and um that's it. This is my mama calling. I gotta go. Okay, that's all I got, you guys. Don't forget to click the like button. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. I would really appreciate it. I'll see you in my next one.